Can the M1 Ultra in the Mac Studio really beat out Intel's 12900K in NVIDIA's RTX 3090? Well, we have some good news and some bad news from some new benchmarks that were just put out by real users. Apple made some massive claims at their event saying some unbelievable things like the M1 Ultra is 60% faster than the 28 core Mac Pro. It absolutely smokes Intel's Alder Lake 12900K and it even beats out the RTX 3090 while using 200 watts less power or roughly a third of that. The only problem is that Apple is known to be very vague in those charts they show off and with the M1 Ultra, it is even more vague this year because many of these straight up just say select industry standard benchmarks and not what they are. Thankfully, we now have some of these benchmarks to see how it compares to Intel CPUs and Nvidia graphics. And with that, we also have more info on how the M1 Ultra scales compared to the M1 Max as far as cooling and wattage, which we're gonna get into talking about if it's actually worth upgrading to the Ultra and the 64 core option. And with that, I have to let you know that I bought three of these Mac Studios going from a base model all the way to a super high end one so that we could test them out and compare them and show you guys the performance differences, if it's worth upgrading certain components and options and how much performance that will give you depending on what you're doing. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you guys click that circle down below to subscribe so you don't miss it and to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. Let's start out with Apple's first claim, which is that the M1 Ultra in the Mac Studio is 60% faster than the 28 core Mac Pro, which is a $7,000 CPU upgrade over the already high $6,000 base price. They didn't tell us what this test was, but now we have some more performance numbers to see how it actually does in various tests. Starting out with Geekbench 5, somebody tested this M1 Ultra and it got a really high single core score of 1793. That's the highest I've seen for an M1 base chip. Now the Mac Pro with that 28 core scores 1152. So that is a difference of about 56%, close to 60. So if that's what they're kind of going off of, that's not very impressive because even like the MacBook Air gets a similar single core score. So that's kind of weird. Now, as far as multi-core, it got a score of 24,055. That is very high, beating out the 19,900 that the 28 core Mac Pro gives us, but that is still just a 20% difference in performance, not 60%. Now, of course, Geekbench tests a lot of different things. It's a short test, not maxing out the CPU for a long time, which is exactly what Cinebench R23 does. Now, we don't have any leaked info for the M1 Ultra, but what we do know is the performance of the M1 Max, and with the CPU running without any sorts of limitations, that scores nearly 12,600 points. Now, with the M1 Ultra, it's two of these chips running at 60 watts which Apple talked about. And of course, the Mac Studio can handle this no problem because the graphics uses a lot more wattage. So if we go ahead and double the score, we get just over 25,000, which is a very impressive score. Now this 28 core Mac Pro, it scores 24,244, meaning that yes, even under extended load, the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra does beat it out, but that is not 60%, so that is just a little bit faster. Now, of course, this is a $4,000 computer compared to one that is roughly $15,000 if you end up upgrading the RAM, which you have to to get this performance. So that is really, really good as far as bang for the buck. And of course, we are comparing to a years old Xeon processor, not Intel's latest and greatest. So what happens if we take a look at Intel's 12900K that Apple was showing off on stage? The Alder Lake chip does beat out them on Ultra in single core performance, 
performance, which is kind of weird to see because Apple is always so far ahead, but this chip is very fast. But then if we take a look at multi-core performance, the M1 Ultra smokes it by about 40% in Geekbench 5. Now that is a very impressive difference in performance, especially when we talk about how much power this uses, it's about 60 watts compared to about 160 at the base and up to about 270 watts peak for this 12900K. So that's a pretty nice result. But if we go ahead and take a look at 100% raw CPU power in Cinebench, this is where, as long as you can give enough cooling to this Alder Lake chip, which is like a triple liquid cooling system, Alder Lake actually beats the M1 Ultra by about 9%. So what was Apple going off of with that wattage and performance in favor of the M1 Ultra? Well, we don't really know, but what we do know is for programs that are optimized for Apple Silicon, even though the raw performance isn't as good, they could be way faster as we have shown you guys. Even against Windows, for example, compiling Mozilla Firefox, the M1 Max was almost as fast as a 12900K compiling that Mozilla Firefox. It only took one minute longer, less than 10% of a difference, and that was in a 14 inch MacBook Pro. So here we have double the cores and way better cooling. So for certain workloads, we are gonna see much, much faster results. Now, what about graphics? We have to talk about the RTX 3090 that Apple kept referencing. What difference do we have there? Well, we do have a benchmark that came out. It's GFX Bench and some performance numbers. GFX Bench is very well optimized for different platforms and the M1 Max and the 16 inch MacBook Pro beat out the RTX 3080 in a Razer laptop. So it's very, very impressive. So here we would expect it to do well as well, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not really what we see. If we take the 310 that it scored and we double it, you would have, well, 620. But the 60 inch MacBook Pro actually throttled with the M1 Max 32 core. It didn't have to scale the same as the other chips did due to, you know, heat. So properly it'd be about 330. So we would expect about 660 beating out the RTX 3090, which scores about 505 frames per second. So that'd be the nice gain that they could have showed. But the results that we have is a score of 484 frames per second here, way lower. So what gives? Well, we have a couple scenarios. The first scenario could be that the M1 Ultra, the 64 core model is thermally limited even in this Mac studio. I talked about it previously and talked about Apple's graphs where it seems like they're showing the M1 Ultra graphics only using 105 watts compared to the M1 Max showing the full 60. So it could be limited just like the M1 Max was in this laptop and that would kind of suck. But since that video, we also found out that the M1 Ultra is using a much better cooling solution that weighs nearly two pounds more than what the M1 Max it uses aluminum and it is using using copper. So you would think that if Apple's going to this, you know, amount of effort to be able to have better cooling, they wouldn't be limiting this. So the other option could be that this result, the M1 Ultra and GFX Bench was the binned 48 core model that costs a thousand dollars less than the 64 core. If we take the 310 frames per second that the M1 Max gets and we divide it by 32 cores and then times it by 48, that gives us 465 frames per second, showing that we actually get an even higher score here at 484. And if we don't have any thermal limitations and we go off of the proper scaling, the 330 number, we get 495, whereas this score is right there for the 48 core model. If this is the case, that means that the 64 core model will be reaching closer to 660 frames per second, absolutely smoking the RTX 3090. Of course, we're gonna verify all of this. We love looking at the frequencies, wattage, the thermals, and if it's worth spending the extra money, how much more performance you get. So make sure you guys have those notifications enabled. Now, the last test that we have to talk about, it's a more real world benchmark um, that isn't really favored in terms of Mac Silicon, and that is Puget Bench's excellent, very extensive Adobe Premiere Pro benchmark. Now, here we got some performance numbers 
of the actual 64 core M1 Ultra with 128 gigs of RAM. And we're comparing it against the 12900K with the 3090, also 128 gigs of RAM. And the performance numbers are pretty promising. The extended test, which is longer and tougher, with M1 Ultra scores 23% better than the Alder Lake and NVIDIA combination. That is a pretty good difference in performance. Now, the pure GPU only uh, performance here, it's only 3% higher in favor of the M1 Ultra. But when you look at the effects rendering capability, which also does use a bit of CPU, we see a much bigger difference of 35% faster for the M1 Ultra. That's pretty impressive. Now, as far as live playback smoothness, they are very, very close. And then when you go to export, which tests a lot of different formats, here, the M1 Ultra is 45% faster than the best Intel and NVIDIA combination. That is a huge performance difference. And you guys have to keep in mind that Premiere Pro, even though it is optimized for Apple Silicon, it is not as well optimized as DaVinci Resolve and of course, Final Cut. So this is something that's more in favor towards the PC. So that is where we're seeing some more real world results that are showing a lot more favorably for this Apple system. Them. But we're gonna be covering photo editing. We're gonna talk about compiling code, 3D rendering with Blender, with the new version of Blender. We're gonna look at a lot of real world tests. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you guys click that circle above to subscribe. We can't wait to get this. Check out one of those videos over there. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.